Welcome back to DR Sports, everyone. Let's catch up on the Australian Open. Been a few days since we've talked about it, and there's been lots of tennis, lots of shocks to discuss as well. But actually, that's kind of my... This is my overarching point. It's been a little bit the point I've made in all these videos, which is just a degree of disappointment in some players. Uh, there is that joke going around that everyone who featured on the front cover of Breakpoint, um, the new Netflix series, of course, that covered uh, covered tennis very much as they brilliantly did for um, Drive to Survive um, and Formula One. The joke is that everyone that's on the cover of that um, had poor tournaments or at least didn't get as far as they'd have hoped and was knocked out pretty quickly. Uh, but look... I think there has been a bit of a disappointment in some players because going into this tournament, OK, injury played a part. We lost Rafael Nadal. He bravely finished his match and was knocked out. But, you know, he had this hip problem uh, that stopped. Was it hip? I think it was hip. Um, obviously, you know, that affected his gameplay. Kyrgios didn't even hit a ball in the tournament. Uh, you know, there was a lot of anticipation that he could be having a big tournament after his quarterfinals in the US and doing so well at Wimbledon. Um and then who was it? Alcaraz, the US Open hard court slam winner, um, didn't even you know make it because of injury ruling him out in the weeks before. And so he felt that an opportunity had opened up, and it was just disappointing. Okay, Murray, unbelievable, he did against Berrettini, but Berrettini, you know, out in the first round, Rude, Fritz as well, uh, Orgelia Seam, I think, out in the quarters. We're going to just double check that maybe the round before. And it's just a bit frustrating that some players that we had kind of real hope, aspiration, but real hopes and. Um, I mean, there's no better word for that, you know, to go further in the tournament. Um, and, and they struggled. They, you know, were out at early rounds. Sometimes you wonder whether the pressure gets to some players because it's opened up. Federer doesn't play anymore. And only two years ago, he was incredibly competitive. Djokovic about, you know, with his hamstring thing, was he going to be all right? You know, Nadal out early. And some players haven't taken advantage. But one who definitely has or seems to be is Stefanos Tsitsipas. So we're going to talk about him and his journey in a little bit. But let's talk about Novak Djokovic. And of course, we will be having a little game. So who we think will be making the finals and who will be winning it overall in both the men and women's singles. Let's talk about Nova Djokovic. He faces uh, Paul in the semi-final. Tommy Paul, um, unseeded player, who, look, Djokovic earlier on, you know, was complaining about his hamstring. And, you know, there was conversations, you know, how long is he going to last? Is he going to be able to keep playing through signs of maybe pain in his game or whatever? But he's just been absolutely blitzing his way through. And if you just look at what he's done... I mean, let's just get it up. What he's done in the last few rounds. Rublev, 6-1, 6-2, 6-4. <laughs> That's the fifth seed. And Djokovic has blown him away. And he did the same a little bit earlier. Uh, Dimenhoff as well, the Australian. 6-2, 6-1, 6-2. <laughs> he light work of it. Unbelievable, the form that Novak Djokovic has picked up in the sort of, in the more later rounds compared to the earlier rounds. Um, and, you know, he's now probably everyone's favourite to go and win it. I mean, how could you look past him? He faces Tommy Paul, um, and, and you've got to think that he's the favourite to then make his way to the final and probably win the whole thing. But a player that could stand in his way is Stefano Tsitsipas. Now, Tsitsipas, let's just remind ourselves of Sunday. Yep, Sunday against uh, Yannick Sinner. A 6-4, 6-4, 3-6, 4-6, 6-3 six, win. And... I mean, they were playing some outstanding tennis, some real hard hitting from both players at times. And Sinner's a fighter. Sinner goes to five sets. Um, you know, he did it with Alcaraz at the US Open. He did it with... Uh, who did he go to five sets with? Djokovic at Wimbledon. Funnily enough, every the, the last two winners of slams have had to overcome Sinner in five sets. And City Pass has done just that. So will history repeat itself in its own little way? But, you know... Tsitsipas, who is sometimes known as someone who can choke on the bigger moments or the bigger stage. Um, I, you know, I couldn't believe he lost that match to TFO, um, you know, in Federer's last tournament at the uh, Labour Cup. You know, having cruised that first set, he ends up then not getting over the line in the second and then losing the, the tie break. You know, he did really well. You know, it must have been mentally tough, you know, having been two sets up against Sinner. Sinner fought back brilliantly. He got phenomenal stamina as well. Sinner is a very exciting young player. And Tsitsipas came through that with a final and fifth set win. And I think that is a big moment for him. He has since gone on to beat, um, let's get it here, uh, Leheka, I want to pronounce it right, uh, Leheka, 6-3, 7-6, 6-4, more comfortably than his uh, round of 16 win and has booked himself a place in the semi-final uh, where he will be playing uh, Kachanov, the 18th seed. Um, and again, that's a tough game. That's not going to be easy. But could he be the one 
that stops Djokovic getting a 20-second grand slam. The thing with Tsitsipas is he's a big hitter and he's got a big serve and he's got some weapons that can get him out. But it's about concentration. It's about handling the big stage. That's just... Forgive me. I should... Again, I did this on the last video. I should be doing my... Um, my research before not on but let's just see how f the furthest he's gotten a slam i think uh city pass grand slam record let's have a little look because uh, i can't remember if he's made a final before having a quick look having a quick look where's his grand slam work record show me i can't find it I was trying to have a quick Google. Let me know in the comments section. Let me know in the comments if he's ever made a final at a Grand Slam. Um, I don't think he has. Uh, he has won nine ATP singles titles, appeared at major final 2021 French Open, finishing runner-up to Novak Djokovic. Okay, fine. Um, so there you go. So he has. Uh, so it could be, you know, a repeat of those two meeting in a final. I really want this for City Pass. I really want new players to be emerged and coming through winning slams. We saw Medvedev do it very recently. Another player who, by the way, knocked out a lot earlier than we expected. Um, but let's just look back at some of the other games. Uh, Orge Aliasim out to Leheka, the person who uh, was out in four sets, the person that uh, Tsitsipas beat in the uh, round before last. Um, Djokovic Dimino, as I mentioned, Bautista Agu, who beat Andy Murray, out to Tommy Paul, who's about to face Djokovic. Rublev and Rune going to five sets. Rune, yeah, I mean, heartbreaking. You lose 11 9 on the fifth um, in a super tie break. That would have really hurt. Um, Especially having won the fourth set. Sometimes you can have momentum going into that fifth. But no, out to Rublev, who was outclassed by Djokovic as well in the quarterfinals. Uh, you know, any other big upsets? No, Kachanov beat Korda. And that's pretty much it. And we're left with the semi-finals. Kachanov, Tsitsipas, Djokovic, Paul. I think it will be a Tsitsipas, Djokovic final. Although Kachanov, I'm sure, will push Tsitsipas. I don't think he'll get it done in three, maybe four, maybe even five. And then I hate to say it, but I think Djokovic will come through and win it. I do. I really do. Uh, let's have a little look at the women's singles. Uh, we know we lost uh, Coco Goff to Ostapenko in the fourth round. She'd beaten Pera, Raducanu and Sinyakova. We were keeping an eye on her. Very exciting young player. Still only 18 years old but out to the 17th seed, Ostapenko, 7-5-6-3. And the person now that everyone's looking at in the Australian women's singles is Rabaikina, who plays Sabalenka in the final. The number fifth seed she is. She beat Azarenka in the semi-final and beat Ostapenko, who knocked out, as I just mentioned, Kokakov in the quarterfinal. And Rabaikina, you know, she's going in as the 22nd seed. I think by making the final, that means she's going to be getting into the top 10 for the first time in her career. And she's the Wimbledon champion. So very interesting to see what edge that gives her because, you know, Wimbledon doesn't feel that long ago. And imagine when you're playing sport regularly and you know, you're constantly traveling, these slams probably feel like they come across, they come around a lot quicker than you expect and whether she's going to be able to channel what she did in that Wimbledon final you know I hope for her she does because it'd be amazing to you know rack up two slams in the matter of six months and in three competitions Sabalenka let's just remind ourselves of her run uh let me, da, 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 da. Uh, beat Lynette in the semi-final 7-6-6-2 Vekcic 6-3-6-2 she beat Benchic the 12th seed 7-5-6-2 uh, and just looking yeah she hasn't dropped a set oh let's just go one more did she drop one in the first no she hasn't dropped a set all tournament Our, um, Arena Sabalenka I hope I pronounced it right the number 5th seed 24 year old uh, so I think that would be a very fascinating final between them as well uh, but yeah guys that's everything on the Australian Open really um, you know been keeping an eye on it and again a little disappointed that okay players get out early but there's not a little bit more resistance still to the people you kind of are expecting to win it anyway now I know we've seen Alcaraz win the US Open Sinner is looking incredibly impressive and exciting Medvedev won the US Open not that long ago um but otherwise, you know, last year it was still Rafael Nadal and Djokovic winning through the four slams. And it could be Djokovic winning the first of this year's as well. So we need more resistance. We need the play. I'm saying this because I'm a Federer fan and I just want him to not 
fall too far behind Djokovic and Nadal uh, when it comes to overall slams. But um, I do think we want a little bit more resistance and it'll be interesting to see how they all shape up come the French, but still lots of tennis to play you know, between the end of the Australian and the start of the French and we'll try to cover some of that on DR Sports. But let me know your predictions for who's going to win it. I think Rubikin is going to come through. I'm going to give it to her and I'm going to give it to Djokovic as well. So let us know in the comment sections who you think will be coming out as Australian Open champions and uh, what you'd like us to cover in the coming months before the French Open in May. And yeah, looking forward to that as well. Looking forward to see how Rafael Nadal responds ahead of that tournament. And yeah, plenty of tennis to play, plenty of young players to look forward to. We'll cover it all here on DR Sports. Hit the like button if you enjoyed and we'll catch you very, very soon.